It's an Atari 2600. Welcome to a two-part series. We're going to take this bad boy apart and we're going to fix it. Yeah, I know it looks like it works, doesn't it? But that's because I've spent some time on it already. Got it for 20 quid on eBay and it said that it was for parts only. So um, came with two joysticks and one game. Anyway, let's get into the detail. Let's take this thing apart. The iconic Atari 2600, or the Woody. The first computer game system that I think I ever played as a kid. So this Atari games console was released in about 1978. One of the first most popular home game console systems, selling about 30 million units worldwide. Top titles included things like Pac-Man, Pitfall, Asteroids, Missile Command and uh, Combat. Designed and manufactured by Atari Incorporated, an American company in Sunnyvale, California. So as you can see, that's the serial number of this particular unit. And this actual unit is a European model. It's got the European TV modulator fitted inside of it. And some of the things that I first noticed with this particular unit the fact that the switches were all gummed up. They didn't really move very freely at all. I realized that, yeah, we're gonna have to do a little bit of work on these bad boys. Now, you've got two level difficulty switches for the player one joystick and for the player two joystick. And you also have the ability to be able to change between a color TV and black and white TV output. There's a game select switch and a reset game switch. Also, the wood effect that's on the plastic on the front of this particular unit has been beaten up quite a little bit, so uh, got a bit of work to do. So there's four screws on the back of it, and all we've got to do is just pop those screws out, and as if by magic, let's turn this thing over and uh, let's have a look inside of it. So being very careful here to remove the top cover so as not to damage any of the switches, we can see there's really not a lot in there. There's a voltage regulator, then we've got our switches and our switch protection covers, our switch gaskets. We've got a few old capacitors in here. We might want to consider replacing those. Let's think about that. And then on the right hand side, we can clearly see the Aztec TV modulator, a few coils and a few more capacitors as well. Let's start by removing the switch gaskets. And we'll find somewhere safe to put all of these bits and pieces so we don't lose them. And again, you can see those switches, they just really don't move freely. There's the main board, and the main board is connected with a ribbon cable to the switchboard on the top. So the ribbon cable easily unplugs. Let's just check those connectors and make sure that everything looks good. Let's get uh, lubricating oil out, spray a little of this into each switch. And with a little bit of luck, this penetrating oil should free up those switches. So let's go ahead, rinse and repeat, and make sure all of those switches now function correctly. All right, so that's serviced the uh, the top side of the switchboard. Let's get this switchboard out, have a look at the underside of it. So first things first, we need to disconnect the, uh, the cable from that Aztec modulator. And then we've got to get the screwdriver out, oh yeah. 
the screwdriver of power and knowledge. Pop the screws out on the main board, and then with a little bit of luck, once we've carefully uh, adjusted the position of that free roaming ribbon cable, <laughs> yeah, we can pop that, uh, pop that switchboard out. Thankfully, the cable uh, that connects to the TV, that modulator cable there, is uh, just a phono to standard uh, TV coaxial type cable. So once we've got this thing apart, we might as well just uh, pop the, uh, the main board out. Uh, it's enclosed in an absolutely beautiful lump of uh, die-cast aluminium. So, uh, so we'll get into that in just a few seconds. But before we do... Let's have a quick look at that switchboard. So here it is. And uh, as we've got it out, we might as well get into the detail and just make sure there's no obvious problems. The first thing an engineer should do is go in with his eyes and his ears, and then he can shoot his mouth off a little bit later. So as you can see, that uh, Aztec modulator there isn't the traditional Aztec modulator that you would find in these units. This is the European model, so it's got a European PAL Aztec modulator in it. And then there's that beautiful little main board with its original sticker on it. <laughs> and that's where the uh, cartridges fit. We've got a joystick one and a joystick two port. And then we've got a little bit of card there that's uh, just used as uh, insulation and uh, dust protection. A little gasket card. So again, I've already removed a few of the screws from this, just to so that it's a little bit easier on us all. You don't have to watch me with a screwdriver removing screws. And there we go. Let's have a look at this PCB. And on first inspection, the PCB looks absolutely immaculate. The condition of it is really quite impressive. And there's that fantastic enclosure. So, we've got a couple of crystals at the bottom of the PCB. So the first chip that you see at the bottom here is the Atari's Motorola manufactured TIA chip, which is the custom television interface adapter chip. This is the money maker of the Atari 2600, as it allowed for multiple colors, increased graphics capabilities, and sound to be pumped through to the television modulator. So the top two chips that you can see here, then just below the cartridge interface, are the Riot chip, the RAM I.O. timer chip and the MOS technology 6507, which is a slimmed down version of the more popular 6502, probably one of my favorite processors. This potentiometer here is used to adjust color levels. This little tuning coil over here is used to adjust sound levels. So flipping this bad boy over then, we can see that this was manufactured in 1978 by Atari or somebody that was doing some manufacturing for Atari. I'm not sure if Atari had their own facility. But either which way, when you look at it, there's really nothing wrong with it. Again, a close inspection of all of the joints uh, on this PCB revealed absolutely no dry joints. Everything was in immaculate condition. So, good news. We haven't had a look inside any of these cartridges yet. So let's very carefully peel this tape away from the cartridge to expose a single screw in the middle of it. And then let's get our screwdriver out, pop that screw out and have a quick look inside this cartridge. See how it works. There's actually a very clever mechanism inside this cartridge to stop dust from coming inside and causing problems. So we've got a couple of pieces of injection molded plastic that work together as a dust cover, which is spring loaded. And underneath the little PCB, you'll find a spring that connects with those two pieces of plastic and effectively shuts the lid of the letterbox. The PCB itself is just a standard EEPROM. So when you plug the cartridge in, a little piece of plastic pokes into the corresponding hole, releasing the letterbox and allowing those two pieces of plastic to move in tandem and effectively uh, release the letterbox or open the letterbox so that 
the contacts on the ROM PCB make contact with the main board. So I found a power supply for this unit and I plugged everything in, but it wouldn't quite tune into the television. So I went ahead and adjusted the RF modulator ever so slightly with a screwdriver and this has fixed it. The bad news, the joysticks don't appear to be working. They do, but not properly. The fire buttons aren't working. They're moving up and down, but not left and right. So there are some problems that we do need to fix with this unit. Anyway, we'll get those fixed and hopefully for a bit of fun, we'll be enjoying some old school games in a future video. Anyway, as always, please don't hesitate to pop a couple of comments in the section down below. That tells YouTube that I'm doing a good job. And please also give us a good old thumbs up. Or if you don't like the video, you can give me a thumbs down. I don't mind. But either which way, thanks ever so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic week. 